In this module, we will look at some of the factors that have contributed to the tremendous growth in communications. First and foremost is the uh, emergence of the microcomputer as a uh, serious computing tool that is not only used in offices right now, but it is also used uh, extensively in homes. Then there came the need to connect all these different microcomputers together and of course we have the local area networks that connects microcomputers in a specific location for example and also we have the wide area network that connects uh, computers and networks that are distributed around the world incidentally internet is a very good example of the uh, wide area network uh, this contributed tremendously to the growth of communications and then with the LAN there were different computing architectures that came into existence. The first one of course we will study later on called the peer-to-peer. -peer. Then we have the client server architecture. Then there are different implementations of the client server architecture that we will look at. One is known as the file server for example. The other one is known as the application server. And we of course have the thin client or the terminal services architecture. Another factor that contributed that actually is an extension of the terminal services architecture is the emergence or the concept of thin clients. That's the third one. Uh, what is a thin client? When you look at a network, for example, nowadays we have uh, microcomputers as clients that access services on a server. These microcomputers are loaded with software and they are very powerful computers. As such, they require a lot of maintenance and a lot of money to uh, keep these machines uh, working. The new concept that is emerging, uh, relatively new, uh, is to say that instead of having these very sophisticated and involved computers, replace them with something known as the thin clients. The thin clients are computers with minimal software and hardware. All they need to do is to be able to access a server and execute the programs that run on the server. In other words, these computers are not exactly local machines per se. They may be viewed as terminals that are attached to a powerful server so that we can execute the applications that are available on the server on this thin client. Uh, we again will talk more about this in later chapters. This is known as the thin client architecture and there are different implementations of the thin client architecture some have an implementation known as network computer implementation. The other one is known as the network PC. In the case of Microsoft, it is known as the terminal services. That is the implementation of the uh, thin client concept. This is in the case of Microsoft. Then we have uh, fast computers. That's the fourth one, very fast computers and very fast communication technologies, computers and communications. Uh, the second one, by the introduction of fiber optics communications, uh, that has contributed tremendously to the growth of communications. Then there are emerging applications that require communication as an essential component to function. Among them first is the e-commerce, where servers are kept on the internet and e-commerce is facilitated by various communications from clients so we need fast and secure access to servers when we conduct e-commerce there are various signatures that we need to do the transfer of money over the internet and so on that also brings us to the next uh, uh, growth factor which is the uh, called network security which is an important issue in today's world uh, securing your network from hacker attack, securing your network from uh, viruses, etc. So these are some of the areas that have contributed to the tremendous growth in communications. When we look at all the factors that have contributed to the growth of communications, perhaps the basis for the growth is the internet. We will look at different aspects of the internet at a later stage. Uh, right now internet is growing both in volume and in terms of uh, the access speeds as I mentioned earlier. 
some of the access technologies that we will be looking at later on. Uh, in the past, we had only the analog technology where the home telephone line was used for accessing the uh, internet. Right now, there are faster technologies that are available. For example, we can use DSL, which is a digital access technology for the internet. We could use cable modem and of course, we can use uh, satellite PC connections as well. These fast access technologies and the fast backbone that is being developed for the internet as uh, contributed. They have both together contributed to the growth of communications. Now, these are some of the factors that we will look at later on as we go further into the chapters.